But no, we're really happy that you made the time to come here tonight. Um, we feel like, in case you haven't heard from your students yet or other students, the junior year tends to be a little stressful. Has anyone heard that from their students? And so we're hoping that from what we're telling them in the seminar and then what we can share with you guys tonight, that might help just a little bit, um, at least, at the very least, put that stress in perspective so you know why it's there at, at the best, alleviate some of that stress because you have answers and you kind of know what's coming. And so part of the game of getting rid of stress is kind of knowing what to expect. So my name is Jessica Smith. I'm one of the full-time high school counselors here. This is Karen Raboyne, our other full-time counselor. Um, also on our college and career counseling team, Jen Chapman back there. Um, and then Corey Thompson has joined us this year too. She helps out Monday through Thursday with the ninth grade learning lab and is really fostering some really great habits in that that will hopefully carry through um, their way throughout high school. But then on Friday, she spends the day working through the different seminars with us and being a presence in, in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade seminar too. So we're all here to support your students and we're excited for the junior year and what all it might bring. Um, just to give you some little insider info, I don't know if you guys um, know this, but we wanted to share these since you're here, we'll give you the insider scoop of how to really get into college. So we'll watch a little clip to really just make sure you guys get that extra bonus for being here. dead animals is the moral of that story, right? Unless you do, because that could be a great, very lucrative job, I'm sure, because no one else wants to do that. All right, so let's get All right. So just to kind of say, there's a lot of, a lot of rumors out there, a lot of misinformation. But yes, in truth, it is a different ballgame than, than when I went through the process, when you guys went through the process. It is different. Um, and so there are things that, is help, that are helpful for you to know ahead of time. Um, so that you, can, that you can play with that and help support your student in that. So that's hopefully what we're going to share with you tonight. Um, just a few ways to stay in touch with us if you guys don't already know about these. Um, we have a blog that Jen um, helps us maintain. It's nextstepscsd.wordpress.com. So if you guys uh, want to give us a little follow on there, we always see an uptick, an uptick in, our, in our subscribers after these meetings. And then I think the year. The next year we get more at the meetings. Um, we also have a Facebook page too, we try to share out anything we share on the crier, we try to also share on our Facebook page too, so that way if you're looking for something specific um, to counseling or high school programs, it's easier to kind of search through that than to search through the whole main crier page. Um, and then Amory McAfee, um, if you guys don't know, she moved into more of an administrative role last year, um, so she's not so present in the, the counseling team, but she still shares a lot of great information about the college search process. And I've vowed to try to be better at Twitter. Um, so I'm putting it out there. So if you follow me, then that means I have to tweet things. So I'm trying to be better. Um, and then Constant Contact is a great resource to sign up for. Um, if you don't already get those emails via Constant Contact, that's kind of our, our go-to source, at least here at the high school, for getting those big emails out to you guys. And you can sign up for that on the CSD website. Um, and you'll sign up by the grade level that your student is. That way, it'll follow you through from year to year so you can make sure you're getting all the up-to-date information. All right, raise your hand if this is your oldest student, if your junior is your oldest student. All right, raise your hand if you have already seen a, seen a student out of high school and off to a next step. 
All right, so there's a few of you, so that, see they survive. They sit in the back, for the most part. <laughs> they, they survive, but they're still back here, so that's good. Um, we at CSD, our big, I, as I'm sure you guys kind of know, but that's why you're probably still here at CSD, um, our big philosophy is to meet kids where they are. So we know that not every student knows exactly what they want to do from day one. And the students that think they know exactly what they want to do, probably are going to change their mind a few times if they're brave enough to admit that they're really changing their mind. Um, so we really want to meet them where they are. We want to help them explore the different paths that are possible for them. So we do try to speak more generally in talking about next steps because we know that everyone's next step isn't necessarily that traditional four-year college path. Or it could be that traditional four-year college path, path, but with a study abroad in that very first semester, or a global gap year, or this or that. Um, it could be going into community college to take some classes because they don't quite know what they want to major in yet, to save some money, to continue building up their high school record. Um, so there's a ton of different options out there for students. And so we do try to talk about them as next steps because not everyone's path is the same, but sometimes we do get a little lazy in our, in our talk in psychology, but we try to tell the students to give us a little grace that we really do mean next steps because we know that there's a lot of different steps out there for people. But that's, that's, our, that's our way. We want to lead them without judgment into the next productive and happy place in their lives. It's not a nice and warm and fuzzy. You can tell Joy had a hand in writing that early on, right? <laughs> All right. So just to kind of give you a heads up of what the year looks like as far as our work together and our work with your students. Um, so in seminar right now, and Karen will talk a little bit more about seminar in, in detail later on, but they're doing some surveys and, and really learning about what the factors are that might go into making a decision of what life after high school looks like, and then figuring out how they value all those different factors. Um, so we'll have the input from that. We're gonna give you guys a parent survey to take on Naviads. Um, so we'll get your input on kind of what your vision is for your student for after high school. What do you see them pursuing? What do you hope they'll pursue? What are your dreams for them? What are your concerns? What extra help do you think they might need? Um, so all of those things will go in that parent survey. It's kind of long, so drink your coffee before you do it. Um, save and return later, it's okay. Um, and so we'll do all of that, and then uh, the counselors will sit down with their students, just a one-on-one -on -one meeting, just the student and counselor, just to say, okay, here's all the information I've gleaned from you from the surveys you've done in seminar, from feedback I've gotten from you, not feedback, oh, we won't share the parent feedback, but the feedback that I've gotten from the students in seminar, and kind of what I know of you, you know, from the last few years in high school, what else am I missing? What, what don't I have quite yet? What piece don't I have that's really important for me to have in order to think of what could be some great next steps for you? And then once we get all that information, the college counseling team will sit down and we'll round table every single student in the school. And we, some years we have to set a timer because we'll get going and we're like, oh, it's been 30 minutes, we're still on the same kid, we need to keep moving. Um, but we'll round table so that we can come up with best fit options for every single student. And some of those look like traditional college pathways, some of those look like gap year programs, some look like internships, some look like military or ROTC scholarships, and some are a mix of, of those because the students don't quite know what they want to do yet, so we give them a variety. Um, but our goal is to come up with anywhere from 8 to 12 best fit options for them for life after high school. And then we'll bring you guys back, the family and the student back, in around February or so to have that next round of the meeting where we'll share our list with you, we'll kind of talk about what's to come in senior year, what progress the student has made so far in their junior year, what's left to do. Um, so that's kind of that like overview of how the, the college and next step advising process goes. Now, that's our formal way to make sure every single student gets, you know, gets touched and gets that one-on-one that -on -one attention. But that's not to say that if you guys ever want to schedule a meeting in between or you're like, oh, my student's really jazzed and ready to go and tour schools tomorrow, like, can you give me some suggestions? We're always happy to meet in between or consult in between, but that's just kind of the, the main time frame for the year. Because our hope is in guiding students toward the next chapter of their lives, we honor each student's individuality and potential by sharing their, hope, their hopefulness, celebrating their aspirations, identifying possibilities, and opening doors. It's another one from our mission statement. All right. Okay. Um, so just a, a remind, a show of hands. Does anyone remember logging into Naviots last year? I know we sent out activation codes because when I looked, some people like had activation codes. Okay. Well, we'll send out um, we'll send out a reminder email after tonight with kind of like, hey, here are the important dates for tonight, and here are some other things. Um, so Naviots last year, the students used it primarily for career interest inventories, um, exploring different different hobbies, different interests, different personality types. 
So they did a lot of exploring on there. And you guys as parents didn't have a ton to do on Navance unless you want to just kind of bird's eye view it and see what they're doing. Um, this year, that's where the parent survey is housed. So it's really important that you are on Navance and able to, to get logged in and everything. So we'll make sure that um, you guys have full access to that. Um, but like I said, it's a career planning, college planning, success planning. There's scholarship searches on there too. So come senior year, you'll be like, let's check out the scholarship page on that. Um, if you guys want to take a picture of this one, um, so student.naviats.com slash CS Davidson. We only got one D, don't know why. Um, that's our kind of main login page. So if you want to give that a shot in the next couple days, um, there's a forgot username and forgot password option on there. So if you were, if your student was here with us last year in 10th grade, you should be activated in our system. Um, so give that a shot first to see if that works. If not, just shoot us an email um, and we can get you set up on there. All right, another great tool that Naviance has is, it, is where all of the college reps that come to visit CSD, where that database lives. Um, and so students are able to see on a daily basis who else coming to visit us at the school. Um, they can register to attend that meeting and they'll know where to go. Um, a great a great bonus of having the college reps come on campuses for those schools that care about demonstrated interest, which means that they know that you like them and that you make an effort to go and see them. That's the easiest way you can demonstrate interest is by walking down the hall of your own school and they come into your house. So we kind of we, we share it with students this way. If you have a guest coming over to your own house, like you want to come out of your bedroom and say hello, right? You want to make sure that if they're coming onto your onto your campus and that's a school that you think you might be interested in. Make sure you come to that info session, sign a little card, stay after, introduce yourself, shake their hand, um, and get that face-to-face. Because -face. a lot of times, those reps that come here on our campuses are the first ones that read the applications that come from our students. Because most, many colleges read regionally. So they, um, you have one counselor who really gets to know the high schools in their district. And then they're that first read of applications that kind of like is that first, that first run through the set. Um, it just, this is just an example of what it kind of looks like so they can see what colleges are there. And you guys can see this too, what's your logged in as your parent accounts too. You can see who's coming up so you can give them a little nudge nudge say, oh, I, I thought you would see Wilkinson's coming next week. Isn't that one you're really interested in? You should get there. Um, another great tool that, sorry, that was really loud. Another great tool that Naviance has um, are these, uh, these maps that will kind of show you snapshots. So this one um, is from last year, so colleges that accepted our students, so these are just like the top. So as you can see, we're still a little heavy on the, on the eastern seaboard there. Um, but we do have some students that are at least applying and getting into schools farther out west and getting a little adventurous. These are where our students are actually attending. Um, and so these are all of our students that are currently enrolled in college somewhere along the way. Um, so you can see, once again, we're still kind of clustered here, but there are some of those brave souls, and maybe some of your students will be those brave souls too, that will want to stake their own claim out there. And then our most popular schools continue to still be those right kind of around our area. UNC Charlotte, NC State, App State, um, Chapel Hill, uh, Wilmington, University of South Carolina, East Carolina, Clipson, all of those tend to be um, from year to year, some of our more popular options for students. Which is nice because then the schools get to know us really well and so they know what to expect from our students and they know um, what our students are bringing to the table. So I think that's been a benefit to us to have, um, to have so many students applying and attending those schools is they're really getting to know us well and know what it means when a student from CSD applies to their school. All right, we pass it over to Karen to talk about seminar. The non-optional. Yes, not optional. I know. Good evening. For y'all that don't know me, I'm Karen Ravoin. My second year here at CSD, and I am privileged and honored to have your students in seminar. A um, lot of interesting things going on during junior year. Uh, my daughter came with me last year, so she's now a senior. We made it through junior seminar, and you will too. It'll be okay. Um, question when you go home tonight, ask your student what demonstrated interest is because we've been talking a lot about that. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that too. We wanna to make sure that your student is representing themselves when they go to register um, for a tour, when they're there with the, with the rep. Um, mom and dad, I, I hate to tell you this, I'm gonna share this with you, it's time to let those strings go a little bit. It should be their name when you register for a tour. And that shows demonstrated interest. And you know, the student might be able to tell the rep, I've been on your campus before. The rep goes to pull it up and sees nothing. They might see your name. They should be seeing the student's name. So just a little bit of information. I had to do that too. So how many of y'all have been going on college tours? I've seen a couple of y'all. 
on, on social media. Lots of fun, right? Especially in the heat. Yeah, exactly. We're going to talk a little bit more about those two. We have some new visits um, days that we'd like for you to take that opportunity and take your student and go off and visit college campuses. And they're learning, as Jessica was saying, when the, C when the reps come here to CSD, your juniors are a little bit quiet in that room and the seniors are asking questions. So it's a great opportunity for your juniors, and there's some sophomores in there too at times, but it's a great opportunity for them to learn from the seniors who are just spastic and, you know, all hyped up and all their dates are coming for college application time. So please encourage them. Again, it's, it's free instead of taking the trip and, you know, um, spending all that money. Let them see that rep first, face to face. Encourage them to do that. If you go on Naviance, there are tons, I mean tons, of rep visits that are happening here at CSD. Great opportunity. Okay, so seminar overview. So 11th grade is my baby. Um, I mean, each of us have our own, but we teach each other's classes. So Jessica is responsible for 12th grade, and Jen is responsible for 10th grade, but your students get to see um, us a lot, and then we'll push into sophomore at the end of the year. Now, has any of your students come home and talked about seminar other than the absences? <laughs> exactly. You might see some of our emails that come out. We're making sure that the students are attending. They have three absences, otherwise they need to um, have some face-to-face -face makeup time with us because that's how important this is. We don't want for anybody to just start swimming and jumping in that deep end and thinking that they don't have a chance of you know, going off to college or figuring out what their next step is, regardless of what that is. We want them to feel supported. So this program, um, not all schools have it, and very, very grateful that CSD has it. You might hear students, oh, it's too early, I wanna, you know, I wanna take just my core classes and go home. No, come, come to seminar because it will help y'all out in the end. So these are great conversation starters as well, and that's what we want. All right, so junior seminar here. Um, just a short description here. It focuses on helping students with the transition to the next phase of high school. So it is a course facilitated by our counselors, um, our counseling team as well. During the first quarter, I'm going to read from my paper instead. During our first quarter, we're going to examine um, things with the college matchbook. We're going to debunk myths. There are so many myths that we went over recently that you have to pay a high price to get into a great school, that you have to be, you know, A++++ student to get into schools. These are just myths. There's a fit for everybody. Um, again, what they want to do, if it's taking a gap year, if it's wanting to go into the military, there's something for everybody. And we're trying to show them that some of these myths simply aren't true because we come with such things to seminar. I know I had so many myths because, you know, I was back in the 80s applying to college. And now that I'm taking college classes, it is so much different, very different. We didn't have hybrid classes where some were on campus and some were online. We didn't have online classes. And here I am with online classes. So knowing that things change, so just becoming up to date and familiar with the process. But in that first quarter, we are going to um, examine how, how will they get to where they want to go? What do they want to do with their future? How can they find the college or other post-secondary experience that offers the best fit for them? And that's definitely one of the things that we look for, is their best fit. Everybody's path is different. Every child is unique, and they're all not going to look the same. And try to tell them, in seminar, it's hard, when they're throwing out big names like Clemson or Penn State or something like that, and they're all like, yeah, 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 you hear them going back and forth. Oh yeah, well you're gonna go there, I'm gonna go here. And in the end, they're probably, they're, you know, most likely not going to go to that school, there's a chance that they are. But you see them trying to keep up with each other. And that's what we're trying to tell them. Take a deep breath because your path is different. Does it matter if you're going to a private school that you know, someone may not have heard of. No, if that's the best fit for you with the right program and the right price for mom and dad, then that's where you belong. But they're all competitive, so we're trying to get through that as well. 
In the second quarter, we're going to focus on resume development. Third quarter, we're going to explore the application as a personal statement process. And then finally, during the fourth quarter, we'll participate in essay writing workshops. So we just went over attendance as well. The assignments, just make, you know, ask them, have you done your assignments right now? We're doing a lot of self-surveys that we're starting for this next step process. They are to turn in, this, it's a big one, um, for, for Thursday. And then we're going to have another one that we give to them on Friday and then a couple through Naviance. We want them to get, get to familiar with what they want from a college. I mean, it's hard. It is really hard. You know, some of them want the, the same type of atmosphere that CSD is. Some of them want the big, big school experience. My daughter and I went to Queens and she went, nope, 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 I have to have a football team. And these are the things that we don't know until we start talking to our students and figuring it out. So again, just great conversation starters with your students. I need some technical help, sorry. Okay, junior year timeline. No worries, we're all gonna walk through this together, okay? So on here, throughout the junior year, um, the entire year, we're gonna talk with your students about their grades and any barriers to their success um, with, their, you know, with us or an administrator might talk to them, attend college uh, rep visits here at CSD, attend evening programs such as this. And again, if y'all have any questions at any time, feel free to reach out to us because we're here for you and for your students. And as I was just alluding to, begin a conversation. You heard Ms. Smith talk about our next step process and about how we're gonna come up with a list of suggested schools or a combination of gap year or military, community college. It is not a mandatory list to the school. The kids are like, whoa, 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 why are you telling me where to go? And I'm like, no, we're not gonna tell you where to go. This is definitely a conversation starter. Maybe the starting line for where you might want to look because it gets so confusing where, where they are. Um, we're going to view college websites. We're going to continue to plan activities, thinking leadership, passion, taking a look at what they really want to do, um, continue with career researches, and consider early decision options for those highly competitive colleges. So this is all this junior year. I know, take a deep breath. We're going to get through this. We are going to get through this. So we've already been doing update on resumes, we've been creating goals, they've also been writing down a list of questions that they would ask a representative, whether they were here at CSD. It might be a little bit different when they're on a campus because it might be a student-led campus visit, so they can ask a little bit better uh, questions like, how's the food? Or, and they wouldn't normally ask the rep that, right? Or they can ask um, other questions about what social life is and things like that. So they're, we're telling them what to, what to think about when the rep is here and how you want to present yourself as well as on a college campus visit. So in September and October, all right guys, testing time. And all right, I get to talk about fun stuff, the testing time and financial aid all the time. Good stuff. So testing time, they are going to take the PSAT in October. The results will arrive in December. So just so you know, you guys will be getting emails about that from Ms. Smith. Um, November through February, again, we're going to be doing those next step process meetings. We're gonna make an appointment with a counselor, become familiar with college application procedures and school nominated scholarships. They're going to prepare to take the SAT outside of CSD. They are also going to take the ACT in February. So a big, big test of year. Now also, when they take the SAT and the ACT, make note of the score choice option. You can designate up to four colleges to be recipients of the results. Yes, ma'am? Can you repeat the um, dates for the testing? For the testing, it's October 16th for the... I think we have on slide right now, too. Yeah, I think so, too. And then the SAT, they're going to take outside of here. There's test dates that we'll provide you with. And then the ACT, they're taking February 25th. Uh, so just a little heads up, um, college cost. 
money, right? And so the application is so any time that, that there's a free thing, like, oh, let's take advantage of it. Um, so that score choice option, like what Karen was talking about, is a way to send your scores to free to colleges. We ask you to hold off on, on jumping on that free train. In your junior year, your students aren't even 100% sure where they want to apply yet. So we say let that, let that free opportunity pass. I know it's hard to let a free opportunity pass, but let that pass. Um, so that way your students aren't sending off scores before um, they know for sure what college they're applying to, before they've seen their scores back. Because if you choose to send those um, to those colleges when you register, you don't get to see the scores before they go to college. They come to you in the college at the same time. So in your junior year, you still have plenty of time to get your scores back and review them and then decide in your senior year which ones to send off. So I know it's tempting to see that free and then, oh, let's go ahead and get that end done. Sometimes students are excited because they're like, oh, I know for sure I'm applying to Chapel Hill. Let me send them right there. Um, but we'll, we'll caution them, but also you guys too caution them. Um, in the junior year, there's no need to, to send them um, right now because we don't have time to evaluate them. And the other thing is if they do send them off, so again, just, just become familiar with that process and take a look at that process with, with, with them when they sign up on College Board. Um, if they send those scores, they're just going to sit there and wait. And wait until the final application date comes, and that'll be later in their year. So it'll be the fall of next year, or even maybe as late as wrap around into 2021, and they'll just wait until those deadlines. So it's not going to really, it's not going to do anything. It's better that it comes, they put it together and send it off closer to that application deadline date. Okay, so mapping out the testing, um, the students are asked to take uh, stock of their priorities for college. Like I said, we're doing a lot of self-surveys and we're gathering that information and especially in those meetings, we're meeting one-on-one -on -one with your student and then gathering that information from the survey, that questionnaire that we're gonna have for parents, gathering all that information together so we can best help um, then later in the year, they're going to start narrowing their list for more in-depth research and campus visits. Um, make sure that they take advantage of you visits. Um, October 17th and 18th are two days that they have, have off from school. We have teacher work days those two days, great days for you to take advantage of that and um, have your student register for those visits and, and go ahead and take them. Um, there's also in February, it's February 13th and 14th as well. So back-to-back -back dates. And then plan your summer options. Now, most of the time when you want to visit a campus, you want it to be bustling and busy. You want to see campus life. Your student wants to see campus life. Um, I just took campus visits with my daughter during the summer. There were some students there. They were you know, taking classes. But we're going to go back here in the fall on her top choices so that we can see the bustling campus and get a different view altogether. All right, so March, April, and May, um, we are going to sit down at your uh, parent and the family uh, next step meeting, and we're going to register your student for next year's classes. And then May and June, begin to think about essays. We're going to talk to your students about that, and writing drafts over the summer. I know that they'll be doing that in other classes, so we're all coinciding and getting them on track. And then the last thing, we do hold a college application boot camp over the summer right before school begins. Um, we were like butting up against the teacher work, work week this past year. So um, great opportunity for your student to get a head start, get some extra assistance in uh, making those college applications and getting familiar with the entire process. Okay, any questions about that so far? I know it's a lot. We're here to help guide. And that document is posted on, this, on the junior seminar, Schoology major. It is. Um, if you'd like to see things all at once and scroll to the whole thing, if that's overwhelming, just scroll through little by little and see, see what's there. Have we lost anybody yet? Everybody's good? All right. Okay, so maybe a couple of goals here. Defining criteria, as I said, it's an individualized process. Not everybody's going to have the same plan. We want to make sure each student feels supported and that it's okay to make those choices, to be a little bit different, to, to talk to you guys, um, you know, to have a voice but respectfully do so. Sometimes we as parents think, oh, you're going to go to my alma mater. Trust me, I love Liberty. I went to Liberty. My, I didn't, I, I had to back away. My daughter decided to go take a campus visit and she did not like it at all. That's her choice. And I had to sit there and go, okay, all right, 
It's okay. So those are the things where we need to allow them to step up and help them though and support them. Um, students are going to explore what they want and need in their next steps after high school, and we're going to use the information, as we said, to develop uh, recommended post-secondary options. All right, goal number two, decide where to apply. Now again, this will come later, much later. I mean, our seniors are even right now deciding. They're making lists, they're, they're moving them around. What was their top choice may have fallen to number four, number five. That, you know, decisions don't have to be made at this point, but it's just the start of the whole process. So research, campus visits, college fairs, uh, um, going to career fairs, and just narrow down that list of options. All right, there's those tests again. Okay, so here's those test dates. Take the PSAT on October 16th here at school. Only the test takers are going to come. Yes, please go ahead, take pictures. Um, only test takers will be here at school. The SAT or the ACT at least once, possibly twice they should take between December and June. And then work with our counselor to determine the best tests and the schedule. Um, make sure that they know you're scheduling around Think about their sports, things about all their activities. Um, recently, I know that there was a test date on August 24th. Football team had a football game scheduled the night before that was two hours away. Um, I know a football player that I think the game ended up getting canceled because of all the rain and somebody's field was a little bit of a mess. But I know one of the football players says, you know what, it's important for me to get into college. I need to take my test on that date. I'm not going to go to the football game. So this is just one of those things to consider. We all have busy, busy, busy lives. So remember when you look at those dates, think about vacations and what, what is all planned and scheduled accordingly. Um, there are SAT subject tests. Now, you do need to look on the college website that they're interested in. And these subject tests, some of the schools will ask for these tests, okay? Or, you wanna talk about this part, about the what we were talking about earlier, about what they are? Um, but make sure you go on the websites and see if they're mandatory, if they're needed. Yeah, so for the most part, um, colleges aren't going to require subject tests, but we do want to throw them out there um, for the few selective schools that do, or if your student is considering engineering or some of those um, more selective programs at a school, they may ask for specific subject test scores, or they may say, send us what you feel like you're strong in. And so we want to make sure we throw this out in front of parents and juniors um, this year because they're, taking, they're starting to take some really challenging classes. So some of your students might be um, in chemistry this year, some of your students might be in some other classes that all have subject tests attached to them. So they're kind of like AP tests, but there's not a class that goes along with it. It's just another way for students to really show how much they know in an in a area that is one of their passions. Um, so for schools that, that don't require them or say they're optional, it can be just like an actual feather in your cap if you score really high on this. Um, but the majority of schools aren't requiring them. Um, and it's one of those things that when we have our, our um, next step meeting in the spring, we'll be sure to point out if any of the schools we put on, their, on your students list require these or if any of the student schools that your students are already looking at um, require these. We'll make sure we kind of point that out and talk that through because typically they'll take those in March or June. So it's nothing you have to necessarily, sorry, May or June, you have to worry about it right now, but we just wanted to kind of throw it out there just so you know what that word means if you hear SAT subject tests coming from somebody. Okay, our test prep. Um, if accommodations are needed, please be in contact with your counselor to start that process. Um, I know that our admin is very good about working with the 504s and the IPs, but if something is needed, please talk to us. Um, if fee waivers are available, let us know. Registering for the test, reporting the scores to colleges, as we said, not quite yet, hang on to those. But the other thing y'all may not know about, um, that we do have a CSD test prep class. It is um, one of those options for them. The juniors have that option to take it, and I know there's a handful of our juniors who are not registered in that class, um, but though that class is very, very, very helpful. Okay? And making that testing plan. So, thinking about when you take the SAT, the ACT, or both, I've been meeting with a lot of seniors. Well, which one should I submit? Well, which one do you feel that you did your best on? And which one is your college more likely to look at? So there's a lot of homework that goes into this. Um, again, February 25th, we see up there is that ACT is a state-mandated test. They will be taking it on that date. 
And as I said, think about your schedule and other personal commitments as well as your math level. Be aware of deadlines. There are definitely deadlines are almost a month ahead of the test. Um, so take a look at those. So if, for example, if they want to take that one in August, the date, uh, last date to register was in July. So just be, be aware of that. How many times should they take them? Normal to see improvement on the second time with additional study time. If you're looking for tutors, reach out and let us know. Um, we do have some people that do that. Most colleges do not want you to take each test more than three times. Okay? And then we did talk about these subject tests as well. So lots and lots of lots of planning. And guys, you don't have to memorize this. Please reach out to us if you have any questions at any time. Responsibilities. All right, so one of our former colleagues used to always do this great analogy, so I'm going to try not to butcher it. So for all of you returning parents in here, don't tell me if I do it wrong. All right, so imagine a car. So, so the counselors, your students, and you are all potential passengers or potential people in this car. Um, ideally, your students should be driving the car. Your college counselor, your student's college counselor, should be in the passenger seat, kind of helping like, them navigate their way. And then the parents should be in the back seat. You know, read a book, listen to some music, occasionally piping in with a few little things, but not being that really bad backseat driver. Um, so, so we wanted to share some of the responsibilities and roles that kind of we see um, each of those distinct parties having in this process to really help it to be a fun and exciting process where you all are, are having fun learning and exploring together um, and not, not a painful, anxiety-provoking one. Um, so at this point in the year, there, if you're still sitting out of that car, so there are some people where yep, their kids are right there in that driver's seat, and they're off and running, they're ready to go. Um, then you have some people this year that the parents are in the, in the driver's seat, and they've started driving, and oh, the kid's still back there on the corner. Anyone feel like their kid's like, not quite, like, no, I don't want to talk about college yet. That's okay, there's still, there's still time, that's what this whole process is. So that's um, another thing that, that we really ask for you guys to do is, is trust that this is a process and, and students kind of come to be ready for it at different paces. So some of you may have had eighth or ninth graders saying, take me on a college tour, I'm ready to go. Um, and some of you may still be trying to figure out how to bribe your junior to go on a college tour. Like, we'll take you to the game there that weekend if you just come to a tour with us. Um, so hopefully some of the roles and responsibilities can kind of help ease that up a little bit. Um, but we really do want the students to take the lead. This is, this is their college journey. Um, we get into the, the land of we's sometimes in college admissions. I'll be talking to parents and the parents will say, oh, we're taking the SAT on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh really? you're going with them. And we're applying to college. I'm like, I'm sure they'll like you being in the dorm room with them. It's, it is the student's journey. Sometimes it's hard to, to let that go, especially if, if your student has kind of needed your support along the way. Um, and it's okay to still support them, but, but try to catch yourself if you're doing that we, we, we. Um, you know, make sure that the student knows that it's their journey too. Um, it's their responsibility to keep up with all their planning materials and events, making sure they're coming to seminar, making sure they're checking their emails. Um, like Karen was saying earlier, we really want them to be the ones to schedule those tours for you guys, to, uh, to sign up for their rep visits. Um, you know, we want them to be the one taking that active step. It's so easy these days. You don't even have to pick up a phone. You just literally go online and sign up for it. Like you don't have to call anyone. You don't have to have any kind of face-to-face -face interaction. Just sign up online. Um, you know, we do want them to to listen to recommendations from others, but that should kind of have a little asterisk there, you know? Because, you know, you, you should always take recommendations with a grain of salt from people, so I think um, be open to hearing different ideas maybe is, is more accurate there. Um, take their search seriously. Um, start their essays and activities list and seminars. So we've been trying over the past few years to really help them build up their resume on Naviance um, and just really have a great record of every single thing they've done so far um, so that that way when it comes time in their senior year to evaluate what they want to share, they have it all there. So that's another thing that you guys, once you get back on Naviance and are able to, to work your way around there, take a look at their resume on there and see what maybe they've missed. Sometimes they don't feel like things are a big deal, but you guys know um, that maybe not every single student is doing that, and that is something that they should, they should feel proud of or they should take note of. So that's another great thing for parents to be looking at on Naviance. Um, and just try to be the strongest student they can be. Um, this junior year is the last year of grades that go into that GPA that will go on those applications. Um, this is the, the last year of really experiences that they'll have a chance to have a, a big chunk of time doing before those applications. Um, and so not to put so much pressure on this year, but 
we want to make sure you're taking advantage of the time you have this year. Another thing that we, we key the students into um, in seminars is that junior year teachers are the ones who write recommendation letters. So this is their year to connect with their teachers and to show who they are in those classes and to give those teachers plenty to write about in those letters. Our teachers typically write really, really great letters for your students. We've gotten, we get feedback from colleges every year um, about how helpful our letters are. So, um, so they're doing a great job and just really encouraging your students to, to take advantage of that time they have with their teachers. All right, folks, here's what we want you guys to do. You I can already all check off number one attend the college planning events <laughs> so thank you for that um, and then in the individual sessions we have um, those would be great to have you guys there um, help your student you know you might need to kind of scaffold a little bit help them plan those college visits maybe pull the website up and say here it is go ahead and, and put your information in there if we need to kind of baby step it there um, go with your student a lot of times students will say oh I have friends who are going to this college I just want to go with them um, you know and I for one or two that's fine but but this is a family process. I mean, in the end, it's, the student has to decide where they're going to be most comfortable and where they feel like they can be successful, but it is a family process, so we do want you guys to be seeing these options with them, too. Um, talk to them about cost and location. So this is one of the harder conversations that we have with students sometimes in their senior year where they've gotten their answers back from colleges and like, yes, I got into my dream school. It was a reach, but I got there. And the parents are like, oh, well, about that. That school is 7000 a year. That is not going to work for us. Um, so have that conversation up front. There are a lot of great tools out there to help you um, estimate what that actual cost may be for you. Every college website has to have a net price calculator on their website to help you figure out what, what your individual cost may be. So depending on, on your family's financial situation, any kind of merit your kid may bring to the table. So um, their test scores, your GPA, and early in the junior year you guys won't have a lot of that extra stuff to plug in there, um, but as you're kind of going through the process, just keep that in mind. Um, the FAFSA comes out October 1st of, of the student senior year, um, but you can go on to like FAFSA Forecaster or some of the other websites to kind of get an idea of, okay, if I were to put in my family's financial information right now, um, how, how much aid might I qualify for, or what is the government gonna say? That I could pay for college, because um, then that's the number that 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 the colleges use to kind of help determine how much need you might have. Um, so there's some things you can be doing now, just so you can have so students can at least kind of know, so they're not caught off guard when they get into that dream school, and, or or the, you know they get into that California school that, that they really wanted to go to. And you're like, oh, sweetie, we're not buying you plane tickets every time you come home. That's not that's not going to work. Um, encourage and support your student. Relax. Try to try to relax. Um, this it can feel like everything has to happen now, now, now. But you, but you have time, we promise. And, and um, you know, go back to that timeline that we shared. Talk to your students. Have your students come talk to us. There definitely is is time. The year can seem like it goes fast, but, but there's plenty of time. And always reach out if you have any concerns. So our part, what we'll do um, is we want to provide all the information and resources that you and your students need. So through seminars, so through presentations like this, through one-on-one -on -one meetings, phone calls, emails. Um, we want to be a great resource for you guys to uh, make sure you're feeling like you have all the knowledge. Um, we want to make sure we're getting to know every student and give them that individualized recommendation, give them that indiv individualized attention um, to really see how their interests and goals can amount to something after high school. Um, and then be available for questions about the college application process um, and everything that kind of comes along along the way. I th the first slide said this, but I would say it again here. Um, well, we're both here full time and are perfectly happy to, to help any student in need when it comes to kind of the college admission process. We, um, we try to stick to alphabets just to make sure that everyone's getting what they need. So I typically work with students who have last names A through K, and Karen works with last name, with students' last names L through Z. So I forgot to point that out earlier. But so if you have any questions, Feel free to send them to your student's counselor. If you can't remember, that's, that's fine. We'll, we'll answer and then redirect you and leave the other one in. So it's no big deal if you ask the wrong one, but just so you know, that's kind of how we divide things out to make sure everyone gets taken care of. All right. Um, so on Wednesday, September 18th, um, that morning we'll host just a really informal Q&A session. So anyone who's available and wants to come in is welcome to come in. Um, we'll go over more Naviant stuff then. So if you want to see more of the scattergrams or see how to find college visits, um, we'll be available for that. If you have questions about 
the college application process, if you have questions about getting your student to care about the college application process, whatever. Um, bring your questions. We don't have an agenda for that day. Um, we're just here and we'll talk with you guys and answer your questions. Um, so that's something to put on your calendar. Um, next Thursday night, um, every year, or the past few years, um, Davidson College has been so gracious to either send some of their people out to us or in the past few years, we've partnered up with the other um, independent and charter schools in our area that we formed a college counseling consortium with. We're called the Lake Norman College Counseling Consortium, in case you guys care. Um, and so we're, we partnered with Davidson College to host a financial aid workshop. Um, and so this would be a great opportunity to, um, to kind of debunk some of those myths around financial aid. It's not just specific to Davidson College. He'll go over um, kind of what, what different aid packages might look like, what that landscape is for um, need-based aid, for merit-based aid. So it's just a really great workshop if you haven't, um, if this is your first time through and want to kind of get a preview of what's to come. Yeah. It is, um, it's in their theater or auditorium. It's in this, where the student, um, try, I can't, like the name is escaping me. If someone knows the campus well and says a name, I can tell you if that's right. The Lily Gallery? The yeah. Lily? What? Oh, okay. The Lily Gallery, maybe is that something? That's what it was last. Year. It, yeah. So, um, so in the in the recap email that I'll send out to you guys tomorrow, it'll have the link they've asked people to pre-register just so they know what numbers to expect, um, and so it'll have all the information there for you too. But it's um, there. You go. Chambers Building Lily Gallery. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so that's a great one to go to. It's about an hour, I think. Um, so it's not a, a huge time commitment. I mean, I know you guys are, are here tonight too, so I appreciate that, but it's, it's a good one to go to to give you a little heads up as to what's to come next year. Um, in January, we, um, we, if you haven't come to this one before, we've been doing this book for the past couple years because we just love it so much. So if you've already come, feel free to come back and share um, what you kind of picked up from it over the years of reading it and thinking about it. But um, Frank Bruni's book, Where You Go, is not who you'll be. Um, we think it's just a great, a great reminder to look at kind of what's the main goal of this post-secondary experience? Like, is it just to have a name on your diploma or is it about all the things that you learn and gain and experience along the way? And so I think it's a really great book to kind of just put all that into perspective. And so um, we'll, we'll send out reminders to you, so this won't be the only time you see it. Um, but we'll host a morning a morning book talk and then we'll, um, we'll make the evening one available. Um, so we'll send out an RSVP ahead of time just to make sure that we have enough people to come to that evening session. But that's another kind of upcoming event for you guys. Do you guys all hear that? Yeah, have it for summer reading. Yeah. Yeah, so the so the senior teachers have put this on there on their seniors reading list. That's awesome. Did you have a question? Uh both. Yeah. Um, here are a couple other dates that are I think we think are good for you to have on your radar. Um, like Karen was mentioning, we have um, we've, we've been as intentional as we can be with our school calendar, trying to give you um, some of those teacher work days back to back, with the intention of um, giving you a chance to get out there and go see some schools, um, go see some places that might be a little bit farther away. So we have a couple in October, then a couple in February um, that are great times, and typically the colleges are in session at those times too, so that way you get a chance to really feel what the school will be like with students there. Um, if you have an artist, um, National Portfolio Day is a great day for them to um, go and, and see what art schools are looking for in those portfolios. Um, the one in Charlotte is October 6th, um, and so that's something to check out if, if you think that your student might be applying to some art schools or any kind of school that might require a portfolio. Um, they can bring what they have at this point and, and have it kind of critiqued, or they can just kind of go and observe and see what um, critiques the, the seniors that are going are getting from those, um, from those reviewers. Gap year fair, if anyone thinks their student might be interested in, in a gap year between um, high school and college. Um, there's a gap year fair every year. They haven't announced the dates yet, but typically it's somewhere between March and or January and March um, here in Charlotte. Is everyone familiar with what gap year is? I think we just kind of throw that term out there. Raise your hand if you're like, what is a gap year? You guys all know what a gap year is? That's awesome. Okay, so I wish I would take a gap year. Um, there are a whole host of different varieties of gap years out there. It could be anywhere from a student just saying, you know what? I want to work 
I want to earn some money. I want to be able to help pay for my college. So my gap year, I'm just going to be working for a year. To I want to travel to Africa and volunteer in in a place there, or work with endangered species, or whatever. So there's all kinds of different gap years out there that we're happy to help um, advise to. We've had some students do some really really cool gap year experiences, and they come back super ready for the next step and and have a greater sense of who they are. Um, a lot of colleges are are really um, on board with gap years because they see that students that come back from gap years are much more engaged, much more ready to just jump right in and be a student and are and are choosing to be there versus feeling like, oh, it's the next step. Um, so if that's something that your student is kind of toying around or if you think that might be a good option for your student, make sure you share that in that parent survey with us so we can start talking about that. Because um, sometimes it's more of a, a newer thing or more unfamiliar thing and so um, we want to make sure that you guys have all the information you need about that. Um, the NACAC College Fair, so that is the, um, this big, big fair. Has anyone been to that one in here, been to the NACAC Fair? Yeah, big, right? Yes, so that is definitely one not for the faint of heart. Um, hundreds of colleges are set up there, thousands of students and parents attend there, um, but it's a great chance to see some of those schools and have a face-to-face -face with ones that are across the country or maybe you can't get to, um, or just to gain some more information. Um, so that's, that's March 22nd next year. Um, so that might be something to think about. Um, and then, like I said, we formed a, a college counseling consortium with the area. Ooh, I fell over there, guys. Sorry. <laughs> um, with a college college counseling consortium with the area charter and independent schools. And so the past few years, we've been hosting a case studies event where we invite um, college admission reps from a number of schools, and students and parents can attend and kind of do a mock admission sessions to learn what they're looking for. And then it's capped off with a college fair. We've done that for a few years now, so we're meeting this fall to kind of reevaluate. Do we want to still do that? Do we want to do some sort of college fair and um, info sessions? So we're, I'm sure we'll do something. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, but it, we may switch it up a little bit and not do that college that case studies event every year. We're going to do something else um, that's just as, as worthwhile for students and families. Do you guys know this is coming? shouldn't be threatening um, and, and should be self-reflective and you should be looking to all the options that are out there for you rather than thinking about what's not going to work for you. So we're hoping that um, with all this partnering together we can, can make that mission statement come true for our juniors this year. All right. So we tried to end a little bit early so I have plenty of time for questions. So we'll do some general questions. If you need to get up and go that's perfectly fine but if there are some general questions we'll take those or we can do some one-on-ones afterwards. Yeah. It depends is the fun answer that we end up giving a lot in the junior year. Um, so it, it's there is a, a slight delay in getting those test results back. So for students who um, who maybe are um, are only in like math three in their in their junior year, um, you know they took that traditional math course one, two, and three in their junior year. They may want to wait and get their um, test results back, do some studying, get some more math under their belt, and then look at that um, look to the of March um, SAT. Um, students that have already made it past Math 3, um, they've pretty much been exposed to most of the concepts. I'm looking at Shannon to make sure I want the key right. Pressure good math teacher there. Um, they, they've been ex at least exposed to a lot of the concepts on there, so um, those may be students that are ready to go ahead and take the December one. Um, SAT used to do a January one, which was really nice, because that was that kind of midway thing. They weren't quite ready for it in December. They didn't want to wait till March. Well, they took away that. 
Um, so students have the option of December or, or March to take the SAT. I will say the nice thing about the March SAT is that all the students will take the ACT here at school about a week prior to that, and there's some great research behind clustering those tests together. So you're studying, you're kind of knocking two birds out with one stone. Um, so for the past year or so with SAT dropping that January date, we're seeing more and more students maybe wait for that March one. Um, but I think if your student is ready, especially you know some students took the PSAT last year as a sophomore and they've kind of already been exposed to it, they know what's out there. If your student's doing a lot with their test prep right now um, and are really preparing for the PSAT rather than just saying, eh, I'll wake up that day and see how I do, um, you know, then they may be ready for the December one. Um, and then really they're using that PSAT for that practice thinking how kind of their gut reactions to it and what they feel like they understand. So does that help at all with my it depends answer? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so in our early years, um, Anne Marie and I used to hit the road and on the teacher work days and we would say, hey guys, we, we have lined up ourselves to go on a campus tour at um, Clemson and Furman. We're going to be at Clemson at 10 a.m. and Furman at 2 p.m. Here's the website if you guys want to go and sign up on your own. See a familiar face when you're there, we'll be there. We haven't done um, like full scale like school trips. Now I will say in the last year, um, last year or two during intersession, we've had some college visit, a college visit option during intersession. So that's those few days right before spring break in April or end of March, whenever our spring break falls this year. Um, so that is an opportunity. I think we're doing South Carolina schools this year. We did North Carolina school. We did a couple of North Carolina schools this past intersession. I think we're targeting some South Carolina schools this next year. Um, that's really the only kind of like school trip kind of option. Um, but again, now we use our teacher work days to write recommendation letters for our seniors and get out and see schools at other, at other opportunities. But yes, there was something like that that used to happen. Great question. Yeah. But that is, a, that is another thing, you know, um, we also have had parents kind of network with each other and say, okay, well I can't take the days off work, but um, I know my students are interested in these schools. I'll chip in some gas money and they can go with you on, on these tours. You know, so definitely use your parent network. Um, and sometimes the students will do that on your behalf and they'll say, oh, I'm going to so and so on these teacher work days. Um, but yeah. So in your, in your student senior years when they start applying, so there's a couple schools um, that have, that will have rolling applications and um, some of them open up um, in July, but that's not the, that's not the rule, that's definitely the exception. Um, for the most part, your first hard deadline a student's going to see is October 15th. Um, so really getting back into the senior year, getting their feet on the ground, kind of figuring out their senior schedule, starting to work on applications. They'll have, you know, this first two months of school or so before that first hard deadline. Um, and then October 15th, November 1st, November 15th, December 1st are kind of the first round of those early deadlines, which um, give the students a, a chance to get their answers back sooner. Um, it also, that's, um, this colleges are typically filling a good portion of their class. Uh, from those first deadlines. So that's, for the most part, we recommend the students do look at those early dates. And we'll, we'll talk more one-on-one -on -one if, that's, if that's not the case. Sometimes students need um, some extra time to maybe do some more testing, um, to maybe get those grades from their first semester of their senior classes to be a part of that package to kind of say, you know, how well did a Rocky start? It's okay. But I'm working my way up and see now look how good I'm doing my senior year. So sometimes students will look at those regular decision deadlines, and those are usually January 1st, January 15th, February 1st, March 1st. Um, kind of kind of deadlines. All um, all students will hear from colleges by April first, and then they all have to submit their decisions by May first. So you do truly have that full senior year between all the different deadline options um, to get an application in and, and hear back. State, uh, Chapel Hill, Elon, and Queens, I think. Or maybe the Queens was a year before that, but I think they're, I think we're thinking um, since I'd like some some South Carolina schools this year. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood that question. Yes, intercession is another time that um, students can choose U visits as their option. If they choose that, they get it. And so families can arrange their own trips during those those three days as well to go out and tour whatever schools they'd like to. Yeah, thank you. Sorry.